Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm working on the front brakes and wheel hubs on the 1971 Corvette. The car, when I bought it, again, I bought it on eBay, it had a lot of new parts, including the brakes. <clears throat> you can see here, I mean, you can see how clean the brakes look. They look brand new in here. And I painted them, they, they were just cast when I got them, and, and they, were, they weren't rusty or anything. And um, you can see the bottom half here, you can see how clean the metal was yet. They were basically brand new, but because of their age and sitting, they're just stock calipers so they're cast iron bore with um, I'm not sure this looks like it's got aluminum pistons in it I don't know um, but anyway the um, the bad thing with these stock pistons they have a lip seal in them and those lip seals tend to leak over time especially when they sit for long periods of time and I think this car must have sat for a long time after they finished it uh, um, I figured while I was going down this far, I'd go ahead and pull the wheel hubs off because I don't know what the bearings look like. So I got the, the caliper off, I, I got the rotor off, which luckily these again have been replaced. So the rivets have been drilled out in the past. So I didn't have to drill those out and beat those out, which uh, that's, that's a little bit of a job in itself. I mean, it's not bad, but it's just, it's time consuming. So I'm glad I don't have to do that. So, and the rotors are like new they're just rusty from sitting, so I'm going to clean those up good. I'll probably paint all of the non-contact surfaces so that uh, it doesn't get all rusty like that again. Okay, so we got the wheel hubs put on the, the car. We got those set real, really nice. They're nice and quiet. Um, I cleaned up and, and painted my rotors and the non-contact surfaces so that um, it, it just looks a little better. It won't rust. Um, and then I like to, when I put my rotor on, I like to put one lug nut on. I just put it on by hand. It's not tightened down with a wrench. Just to kind of hold this, this rotor from flopping around where you're trying to put the caliper on. Now with these calipers, they're a four piston caliper, two on each side. So it's pushing evenly each side of that disc and it's mounted rigid. A lot of the newer cars, uh, only one side has pistons. So the, the caliper has to float to stay centered on the disc where this works from both sides. So it, it uh, equalizes pressure on the disc on both sides. Uh, but anyway, these, these are brand new uh, Delco Remy, they're just uh, basic original equipment brakes. I'm not getting anything fancy right now. I just, I've spent so much money on this car. I think I said in another video that I, I just need to cut some corners here. And, and I, I feel like this is what the factory put on, worked fine. As long as you dry these cars on a regular basis, these will work just fine. The problem is, if you let them sit for an extended period of time, the, the seals, it's just got a, a lip seal in on the piston and it's a cast iron bore, so they'll get a little bit of rust and it'll start leaking. And um, that's why everybody goes to these uh, either stainless steel sleeved uh, calipers with the um, square O-ring, or they go with the, uh, like a Willwood where it's a, a aluminum housing, 
with the uh, square o-ring so that those those things seal really great and with aluminum or stainless you don't worry about it rusting and start leaking so uh, I will probably eventually someday go to those brakes but right now these will work just fine for me and they're about the third of the cost of the, the upgraded brakes but like I said they work fine from the factory they work fine here and the neat thing is they already came in painted I thought I was gonna have to paint them but they've already got a nice coat of black paint the downside to that is the mounting holes had overspray down in them. I tried my bolts in them and they were tight, so I had to run a tap through the four mounting holes on both uh, calipers. So I got those cleaned out and I've got the pads installed. These, these pads slip in from the top and this pin holds them in place. And I put a couple of pieces of heater hose in there to keep them spread apart. So when I put them down on there, I still got to spread them a little further, but without that in there, they'll flop together. It's just a pain to get it started over the, uh, over the rotor. And the other thing I like to do on the mounting bolts, I clean the threads up on them just with a with a wire brush, and then I put a, a layer of Never Seize on the bolt threads. Um, that stuff works really good. It, it, it um, you know, 50 years from now, if I go to take this apart, that that bolt will come out easily because of that Never Seize. It, it it doesn't go away, and it's a real good um, lubricant. I, I mean, uh, it's, that's what we call it Never Seize. They use it on pressing sleeves in and stuff, so it doesn't gold up on them when they're pressing them in. So, so. I'm gonna put the caliper down. I gotta squeeze these pads, or actually squeeze them open more as I put it down on here to get it started. I usually try to catch the back one on there, lift it up, and then squeeze it and slide it down on the front there. And then the little rubber hose will come out. And then just get it down close where you can get a bolt started in it. And again, running a tap through those holes first makes it so much nicer because you don't have to fight not only getting this to line up to get the bolt in it, but fight getting it to start in the threads and thread in easily. And uh, with them cleaned up and the never sees on there, you can pretty much screw it all in by hand very easily. But it started real easy, and if it was easy to get to, I would screw it right in just like I did this top one. And probably this fall or maybe next spring, I'm gonna pull this whole front end off and rebuild it. Uh, none of the bushings are completely gone yet, but a lot of them are weather cracked and they're starting to come apart. So it definitely needs to be done, but not right now. Okay, and the next thing to do is put the brake line back on it. Make sure you have this copper washer on the end of this when you put it back on. If you lost it, you have to get another one. There we go. Okay, and now to kick up, connect up the other end, this goes up in this bracket, and there's like on this one, there's a hex. Sometimes it'll be like a little wavy uh, face on here, but it's got like a hex on it. I don't know if you can see it there. Um, actually, that one's only got two flats. Some of them will have a hex. Some of them will have wavy. This one's got two flats. And there's two notches in this, but there's also a wavy pattern. So if you have the other kind that's wavy, you can uh, use that, that line. But um, you want to get it kind of up in there and just leave it loose till you get the fitting started in it. If you if you put the clip on it, before you get that started in there, it's a real battle trying to get that started in there. So, um, I gotta kind of turn this just a little bit to get it good to go up. Up in the hole. I don't want that. There we go. Okay. And then it's got the little retaining clip that just snaps in to a groove on top there, like that. And now you tighten the flashlight back out of it. There we go. 
angle helps feather right in. You always want to make sure you hold this with a wrench and turn that because if you try to turn that, you end up twisting your line or something. So, okay, there we have brakes. Now I just have to bleed them. I put a new master cylinder on the car too, so I gotta I gotta bleed it first and hook the lines back up, and then we'll bleed uh, all the calipers. So uh, that's it for now.